familiar with. Bibles to the book of Romans in the third chapter. Paul, as he was writing to the church at Rome, he was uh, talking to them a little bit about writing a letter to them about the circumcision. And I would like to just uh, read a few scriptures on that this morning and uh, and see what we can come up with. In verse 1 of chapter 3 of the book of Romans, uh, Paul writes, What advantage then hath the Jews? Or what profit is there of circumcision? And of course, no, a lot of people don't understand what this circumcision is all about as far as the Jew is concerned. But I would that you would turn, if you can, or just listen to me read over in Genesis in chapter 17 for a few minutes. We want to read just a little bit here. And it, it, kind, of, it kind of explains what uh, advantage of what it profited them uh, uh, with this circumcision. But in chapter 17 in the book of Genesis, verse 1, And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, For as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall my name any more be neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And he said then in verse six, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed, and thee. In their gener and these in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Now this is this is speaking about an everlasting covenant. It's not until this happens or that happens. But Jesus, uh, God will always recognize this thing of circumcision because He's fixing to make a covenant with them. Or He's saying here that He will make a covenant. He says He says uh, it will be for an everlasting covenant to be. A God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now this, as far as I know right now, they, they never did obtain the whole thing. But God says here that he will give it to them. And in the uh, millennial reign or, or what I believe that Israel will contain the rest of the land if they haven't got it. Notice here he says in verse 9, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Now, when he mentioned cov uh, token here, uh, in, uh, over in uh, Genesis, uh, just a little bit back over there, he made, a, he, he made a token with Abraham or with, with Noah uh, about the bowl in the... In the uh, uh, the sky, the rainbow, and he said, "This is a token." Mm -hmm. And what the token was for was, when it rained, after it rains, the, the 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 rainbow appears, and it reminds God of His token or His covenant with the world that He would never flood the world again. But now here we see another token that He has given to the Jews, and the question was. What profit is it to the Jews? And so we see here uh, that he says, 
And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man, child, in your generation. He that is born in the house or brought with money or any stranger which is not of thy seed. So what he is saying here is this morning that this circumcision that, that he has uh, told the Jews to do, he, 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 he uses it in the same manner as he does the rainbow. Mm -hmm. And when, when, the, when God looks down on his people and sees what has been done to them, it is a reminder again, even though they don't worship his son, they don't, they don't believe in him, but yet that covenant is still in force and that covenant is still with the people. And God... And God remembers these things, and God uh, knows what kind of condition the Jews are in, but He also knows what what is going to happen to them later on, and how that they will be His people again. And so this this circumcision that He's talking about in chapter three of the book of Romans says, "What advantage then have the Jews, or what profit is there of circumcision?" And so there is a thing uh, that has been promised them by doing this circumcision that he will always keep this covenant with them Amen. now <clears throat> the the covenant the 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 uh, uh, this wasn't passed on to the gentiles because there was a greater covenant made with the gentiles than the the covenant of circumcision now the 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 covenant of of uh, was made to the Gentiles uh, was that that uh, they would receive grace uh, through Jesus Christ. Now we we wanted to look at a little bit at Peter this morning as he went to see Cornelius, and and he had this trance, or he was in this trance or this vision, and uh, the Jew had always thought that they were better than the Gentile because they had this covenant with God. But now listen, what he saw was this sheet coming down with all the unclean animals on it. And this reminded Peter uh, a day or two later about this thing. And he, he says that I, I perceive that God has no uh, difference in between the Gentile and the Jew. And so the the uh, circumcision still applies to the Jews to a Amen. certain degree, and our ours is a circumcised heart. Right. We this morning, uh, when we have a uh, a calling from the Holy Spirit or a calling from God, and calling us unto Him and 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 and, and electing us as His chosen, there is a there is a piercing of the heart. There is a there is a concernment, there is a, uh, a hurting, if you would, in, in our souls because we have, we have sinned and have, have sinned against God. And this piercing uh, is a type of the uh, circumcision that the, the Jew uh, experienced. And so this, this, this circumcision of the heart is one that will last forever with the Gentiles. And uh, uh, the uh, Gentiles will uh, always remember this, and each one of us that has had salvation or no salvation understands what this what this was that happened to us when when the Lord spoke to our hearts and condemned us of our Amen. sins. This is this was a uh, uh, a humbling experience. It was a a time of rejoicing within but yet it was a humbling time and it was the same way with the Jews when they had this thing to go through with circumcision because you remember one of the uh, the uh, I think it was Abraham one of Abraham's Abraham's girl or some went and visited some of the others and she got in trouble and so they made an agreement uh, that they would all be circumcised and notice what happened to them was that they were laying there in the tent trying to get over this and they couldn't uh, fight and her brother come in and killed them. Right. But this shows us that 
that was not for uh, the Gentile. The circumcision was not for the Gentile, but it was strictly for the Jews. And so back in our lesson in chapter uh, 3 of Romans, it says, uh, uh, Paul writes, he says, very uh, much every way, chiefly, and this is what profit would be, he says, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God or the, uh, the commandments of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yet let God be true, and every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and might overcome when thou art judged. And so we see here this morning that all that God has done, He says, this is this is a prophet to them, and it's uh, and it says here that uh, what He has done was 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 justified or was what was right. And so He said. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. And we this morning, as God's people, need to understand what, what He is saying here about letting God be true. Because, listen, we are in this flesh, and we're not, we're not pure. Right. By a long shot. But He says here that God is pure. God is God is pure. God is, He is perfect. But He says, let every man be a liar. And in this flesh, in this flesh, we qualify as that, that we uh, do lie, that we do things that we uh, don't want to do, but yet the flesh is so strong and all this that it overtakes us. So He said here in verse 6, it says, God forbid when, for when, how shall, let me read it again. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? Mm -hmm. And so again, he's talking about what we could do in order to, and, 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 it, and it shows us this, this morning what Peter understood about the Gentile and the Jew, that God is no respected person. And this morning, that should be one of the things in our heart and in our soul this morning that we should not be uh, caught in any way trying to judge someone or right. uh, uh, putting ourselves above someone else because listen, that's not, that's not Christian. That's not what God would have us to do. But He says this morning that every man should uh, look on another as, and with love and, uh, and mercy. So He says here again, I wanted to read you something else here in just a minute. Uh, if I can find it uh, over here in, uh, I believe I got it right now in uh, Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 30 and verse 6. All right, here it is. In verse chapter 30 of the book of Deuteronomy, in verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart, Amen. and the heart of thy and the and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. And so here, here is our. This is the true circumcision. This other, and we know this morning, and we'll read in Galatians in just a minute, but we know here this is the true circumcision. Right. This, is, this, is what, this is what lasts. Now, and this is what salvation is all about. But now in Galatians, I want you to see something here this morning. In Galatians 5, I believe it is. I can find it here. Galatians 5 and verse 1. I'm going to read this right. Okay. It says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, Paul is talking to, and he was sent to the Gentiles, 
Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Right. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by law, ye are fallen from grace. And what he is, he is saying, it's not... He's not saying, and, and, and you know, these, these heretics will grab this and run off with it like a, a, a carp fish with a bait and say, all right, you can fall from grace. But he's not saying that you can fall from grace. But he is saying in practicing, in practicing works for salvation, you're not depending upon grace right, for exactly. salvation. But now notice here, he's saying this, uh, I testify to every... To, again, to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Right. And so we know this morning that the law was made for a uh, as a schoolmaster, and it was just to teach those people that were under the law, and we can use it still ourselves in the law, but the law told us what is wrong and what is right. Right. And it was nothing to say, well, if you'll do this, if you if you but the thing of it is, we could not keep the law. And so there had to be something that would take the place of it, which was the circumcising of the heart or Jesus Christ coming back to this earth and to live and to die Amen. and be resurrected and completed this thing. Now, uh, uh, this is what uh, uh, here uh, in verse... Uh, for he says, Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are uh, justified by law, ye are fallen in grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness and faith. That's that's our that's what we wait for. We don't wait uh, or we don't depend upon the keeping the law. And listen, if you if you think about this, this is this is a type of the Church of Christ and what they're using. For salvation, mm -hmm. because they teach that salvation is not complete without baptism. Right. Now, baptism is the same thing as circumcision to a degree, because it was a it was a work it was a work thing. It was a, uh, a it was works, and it wasn't of grace. And the writer here says that. They could not. They could not be saved through the circumcision that they of the flesh. And here he's saying that that uh, uh, this circumcision, uh, if you if you obtain it, if you it depend on it, you're to do the whole law. And you couldn't do that. And and the water cannot wash away your sins because it has to be a circumcision of the heart. And so they that teach circumcision or they that teach baptism for a part of salvation or for salvation or what anyway except Jesus Christ and Him alone, listen, they're teaching a false doctrine. Amen. And this is this is what Paul is warning these people about here, about this circumcision and about uh, uh, the, the worship idols and things of this nature. So now notice now in verse for, in verse 6, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Amen. And so why this morning can't people understand? Uh, I can tell you why they can't understand. is because the love of God is not in them. Right. Their heart has not been pricked. Amen. And I'm not judging. I'm not. I'm not judging anybody and saying, "Hey, he's lost or he's saved." But I am saying this this morning. If if here he's saying this, uh, uh, but by faith which worketh in by love, and they this morning do not obtain or do not have the word, the love of God in them, because if they did, they could see this more clearly. Right. But what they what 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 it's all about is works for salvation, and we know this morning, and we've quoted it time and time again about Ephesians two and eight. 
for by grace are you saved and not works. And so here we see again, uh, notice in verse 7, you did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that called you, talking about God, a little leaveneth, leaveneth the whole lump. Right. And he's saying here, this this persuasion, this thing of of, of talking about circumcision and all, he, he's saying, hey, uh, who who has who has hindered you, in other words, but he's saying someone has taught you something that's not right. Right. And it is identified as Lebanon. And Lebanon will go through the whole lump and it'll cause the whole lump and it's a type of sin it'll cause the whole lump to be uh, 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 damned if you would because the thing of it is uh, leaven go through bread and it causes it to rise in the same way that that leaven will or sin will get into a church right. sin will get into anything that sin gets into if it's not purged out if it's not got out it will destroy that thing Sin, sin is is death and right. it destroy. Amen. So here he said, "A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump." Then in verse ten, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you here it is shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And so Paul knew somebody had got in there and had taught something that wasn't right to hear. And he said, I, 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 I'm, I'm hoping that he will be taken away. And uh, he says, uh, in verse, uh, 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 verse 11, he said, in, in, or 10, he said, and that's troubling you. But in verse 11, and I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer Persecution. Now right. they were they were they were practicing circumcision, and and he and Paul said, yeah, uh, if I preach against it, or why, why am I persecuted? Notice here. Why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased? I would they were even cut off, which trouble you, for brethren, we have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Mm -hmm. But here it is. But by love serve one another. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing as we go back to Peter. What he saw there in that trance. And he saw and God made it very clear clear to him. Hey listen. One is no bigger than the other. When my eyes are. We're all the same. And we, are, we, need, to, we need to realize that more than we do. That uh, you know. Uh, I'm not to. I'm not to look down my nose at anybody, right? And, and it's just like it's just like people that are uh, teaching the wrong about about certain things in the church. Listen, I, I'm I'm not, I'm not criticizing them, but I I'd like to hear I like for them to hear me, mm -hmm. and that they might understand or that they might get their Bibles out, right? And 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 and, and look at that and read that and let the Holy Spirit speak to their hearts because I have no reason to criticize them because my criticism will not hurt and won't, won't help them a bit because if anything if I criticize them it, make, it makes them worse mm -hmm. because uh, they're, they're, they won't never use their Bible they'll say but yeah but the preacher told me this and I know it's right and so but I'm not, I'm not trying to criticize anybody so here it is for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Here's the sin. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. There's your warfare that Paul talks about. And these are contrary to the one to another, they they see different, different, and that's just like my flesh and my spirit. Mm -hmm. There's a warfare going on every day, every morning I wake up. There's a warfare that goes on there, 
And this is what he's talking about. For the flesh lusts again the spirit, and the spirit again the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Amen. And so if you're, if you're, if you're saved this morning, and someone tries to tell you that you need to be circumcised to complete your salvation, or to be baptized to complete your salvation, or to do more works uh, uh, to complete your salvation, listen, you can look at them and say, brother or man, I think you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because God's Word says this morning, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. And, and it goes on to tell all the old ugly sins that the flesh loves to do. Right. And there, it's, it's, it's just a bunch of, a bunch of filth and, and uh, uh, even down to the thought of foolishness. Mm -hmm. So this morning, uh, uh, I hope something, some of this will uh, help you to uh, try to study more. And uh, if, you might, if you have a chance, you might... Uh, I'd be a, a, a little bit a better witness for uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of these, if somebody comes around and, and sticks this under your nose and says you need to do this, you need to do that, you can tell them no. Right. You're wrong. So uh, I thank you this morning for your attention, and I hope it's been a blessing to you. Thank y'all.